Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us today. It looks like we have most of our group in from the waiting room so we will kick things off for uh, a somewhat special webinar today representing all three of our graduate programs in accountancy here at Geese College of Business. My name is Casey Jones. I'm the Director of Recruitment and Admissions for our graduate programs and really excited to be joined by an alum of our Master of Accounting in Science program, our Master of Science in Accountancy program, as well as our online Master of Science in Accountancy program to talk about their careers, uh, whether somewhat new in their career um, or well-established as in the case of Rob and a graduate of our online program. Each of these professionals have taken a path that we call non-traditional, but they're really working in the accounting field, but not in the, the big four. Um, so we're really excited to hear about their journeys, what's led them there, and what their day-to-day -day looks like. Uh, we are going to have a little bit of time, hopefully at the end, for question and answer, but if you do have questions, Throughout today's session, my colleague Kate is joining us in the background and would be happy to answer those. We also have a QR code up on the screen. Um, if you'd like to connect with a member of our teams, we'd be happy to do so in a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, we have a, a team of recruiters that can talk with you about the individual programs or deciding which one is the best fit for you. All of our programs also offer opportunities for connections with current students or alums. Uh, so if you'd like follow up in that regard, we're happy to do that as well. Quick overview for today's uh, webinar. We will do a, a really high level look at the University of Illinois and Geese College of Business. If you're not familiar, we will also do a really high level overview of each of our graduate accounting programs, but then we'll really spend the majority of our time talking about their panelists and their experience, both in their program, but also in their professional lives. So about the University of Illinois, uh, we are a, a top 12 ranked public university here in the United States, a large campus um, with a large number of learners, both on campus as well as online, a very diverse campus, uh, both domestically with all 50 states represented, but also 100, over 100 countries represented across uh, our on-campus learners as well as online. And then as a graduate of any of our programs, you join the massive alumni network of over 500,000 500, plus living alumni. Within Geese College of Business, we've experienced a lot of success uh, and, and praise as well. And much of that is due to our accounting department, which is well-established and renowned. We've been consistently ranked as the number one accounting uh, faculty by BYU. We are consistently ranked in the top three of graduate accounting programs by U.S. News and World Report. Um, 81,000 plus alumni of Geese College of Business itself, and then tremendous career outcomes. So for our on-campus programs, we typically report that in terms of the number of students who have landed a job or an additional educational opportunity within six months of graduating of their program. For our online program, since uh, most of our professionals come into the program already working, we tend to look at opportunities for career growth, pro uh, promotions, um, and also salary increases. So we'll talk about that a bit more with each program. Mm -hmm. One of the unique aspects of all of our specialized master's programs as well is that they are stackable into our online MBA program. So maybe you're interested in a graduate degree in accountancy now, but later look to continue your education uh, with an MBA. You, are, you can take those 32 credit hours that you've earned and move them forward towards your MBA degree. So that can be directly after, uh, provided that you have a little work experience or take some additional time and come back for lifelong, lifelong learning with geese. So as I mentioned previously, we do have three graduate accounting programs here at Geese, two of those being on campus and the differentiation is in um, what you've studied in your undergraduate level. And then our online program, which can be a great fit either for individuals that do have a graduate, uh, an undergraduate degree in accounting or for those that are fresh into, into the discipline. 
In addition to those three uh, graduate degree programs, we do have a portfolio of four accounting graduate certificates as well. Graduate certificates are a newer offering here at the University of Illinois, uh, 12 credit hours, you do get a transcriptable credential at the end. So maybe you're just looking for some additional uh, credit hours to be able to sit for the CPA uh, or to upskill. Those can be a great opportunity for you as well. We're not going to go into detail on those today, but again, reach out to our team if you're interested in that option. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the programs and then I will stop talking for a second and hear from our panelists. So uh, the first degree is our Master of Accounting Science program, again, known as the MAS. This program is specifically designed for individuals that have a bachelor's degree in accounting from a US-based institution. So the curriculum for our MAS program is really going beyond the basics, a lot of opportunities for electives and customization um, because these learners already have their foundational skills. <clears throat> the program is just nine months in length, can start in a spring or fall option. Um, and one great opportunity for this program is we do have both scholarships as well as teaching assistantships available. So a lot of funding opportunities for our MAS students, um, as well as a flexible curriculum. I'm pleased to be joined by a, a graduate of the MAS program, uh, rather recent, a May of 2023 graduate, I believe. Mitzi, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, um, why, uh, why you chose the MAS program, and then what you're doing currently today? Yeah, hello everyone, my name is Mitzi. Um, I graduated, like uh, uh, Casey said, uh, I graduated in May, in May 2023. Uh, I, uh, with an MAS degree, um, concentration on fraud and with uh, business uh, concentration in data analytics. Um, I chose this program because uh, I know the University of Illinois is uh, very well known on the accounting field. Um, and I have heard good things about the professors and I wanted to learn more in terms of, um, my accounting and I wanted to get my master's degree as well and, uh, eventually take my CPA as well. Uh, and it's a very helpful program for that, uh, too. Uh, I have learned a lot, uh, during my nine months, uh, through, uh, the College of Business. Uh, and then right now I work at Hyatt Hotels Corporation as an internal auditor. And what I do is basically we work hand in hand with uh, the external auditors on uh, testing controls. Um, my day to day uh, uh, looks like uh, so there's like a walkthrough phase where we learn about the financial statements, processes that uh, that the company has, and we learn the procedures. Within those procedures, uh, we have controls. And then those controls we test at interim, which is around September through uh, November, and then to check their effectiveness of the controls. And then from there at year end, we do the same similarly for the November, uh, for the Q4, uh, quarters. And then at filing day, we uh, show our results to see the effectiveness and the issues that we have found for the controls. And then after that, we com it comes the planning phase where we look into like the risk, um, we, uh, a risk assessment of the controls and see uh, what things we can update in the day to day. Uh, yeah. Great, thanks, Mitzi. Mitzi, can you go back just a little bit? Mm -hmm. um, what was your undergraduate was in accounting, but can you talk a little bit uh, about your undergraduate degree where you studied? Yeah, so I had a different route. Uh, I started with an associate's degree uh, at Moraine. Uh, it's a small uh, uh, community college around my area. From there, I transferred to Governor State University. It's also not uh, a small university around my area. And then from there, uh, 
there was a program that led me to applying to the College of Business at U of I, and gratefully, I got accepted uh, to it. Uh, I did do my uh, associate's degree in, uh, I got my associate's degree in associate's in science, and then my bachelor's in accountancy. Great. Thanks, mm -hmm. Mitzi. We'll, we'll hear a little bit more about your journey and your, mm -hmm. your current experience in a bit. Um, switching back to our next program, which is our Master of Science in Accountancy. The acronyms get a little confusing, but this one is known as the MSA. And this program is really designed for learners from all different backgrounds. So it can be someone with essentially no accounting experience at all, uh, up to a learner who has an accounting undergraduate degree from, but from a country outside of the United States. So since there is some differentiation in, in the standards, uh, the MSA is the best fit for that, the, for those learners. This program has a core curriculum, but can really be customized based on the background of the individual. It is, uh, as well as our MAS, is a STEM designated program. So if you're an international learner, uh, that can be great for opportunities in the U.S. to get some experience with that additional OPT time. Uh, terrific career outcomes for both our domestic and international candidates. Um, and a lot of that is due to the career preparation that, that our team does with these learners uh, as soon as they set foot on campus. So the, the ideal start time or the primary start time, I should say, for the MSA program is actually in the summer each year, a June start. Uh, and we do that to really get you uh, get your foot on the ground running uh, to be ready for the busy recruiting season that happens in the fall each year. If learners do have an undergraduate degree in accounting, uh, they can apply for a spring start as well. That's a new opportunity uh, that gets them that earlier start and completion date. The MSA program doesn't have any uh, teaching assistantships available, but there are scholarships available, um, both based on merit and need. So I'm going to switch over uh, again to hear from one of our panelists and a graduate of the program. Sonali, can you tell us a little bit about your background, why you chose the MSA program, and then what you're doing currently? Sure. So um, hi, my name is Sonali. And to start with, I did not have any experience in accounting. Um, so I did do my undergraduate and bachelor's of commerce from India. And then I did a uh, master's of commerce. It was like a one year program in India. But I had worked in finance for like almost five years and I had no accounting experience. But um, just I just wanted to explore uh, the other side of the business. And then I applied to Geese and I'd heard a lot about it from um, the alums, which uh, were there before me. Uh, so I was like, uh, when I got the acceptance, I, that was like a clear choice. I want to go ahead with Geese. And uh, from there on, I think uh, there were a lot of people in my, uh, you know, batch where they were from chemical engineering background or some random background and they they are appearing for their CPAs they want to finish their you know uh, one year MSA so I think uh, this offer uh, MSA offers a lot of uh, different background students uh, into one and it's a great opportunity to everyone uh, for everyone to learn here so I think I've had a great uh, exposure over there and currently I'm working um, in small uh, boutique of tax and accounting uh, both. So during tax season, we're just like all busy. And once uh, the tax season gets over, we're doing a lot of reconciliations. And within like almost five months, I did get to uh, get a chance to sit in a board meeting as well. So I think those are the perks of working in like small uh, tax firms wherein you are literally facing the clients, you're attending the board meetings. If you're great with, you know, communication and you're great with your numbers. Um, and I think the people will give you a chance to, you know, go ahead and, uh, sorry, something happened to me. Yeah. So people will give, uh, give you a chance to go ahead and explore those options to meet the client and all of that. So I think uh, that's going great till now for me. And uh, if anyone have any other questions, I'm here to help. Yeah, great. Thanks, Sonali. 
Uh, last program that we're going to share on and, and meet our panelists is our online Master of Science in Accountancy. Again, this program can be a great option for working professionals with or without an academic or professional uh, background in accountancy. This program is designed to be very flexible, can be completed in as little as 18 months, but also stretched out to up to five years if desired a great diversity in this program as well. And, and again, ranging from fresh graduates of undergrad up to experienced professionals with a variety of different industries uh, represented. We talked a little bit about the career outcomes of this program look a bit different, um, but 76% of our graduates re, uh, report receiving some type of uh, new job opportunity, promotion, or growth in their career while enrolled. So you don't have to wait till graduation at the end. Um, really immediate learning throughout the duration of our online Master of Science in Accountancy. Uh, the curriculum of that program is also customizable. So there are core courses, which uh, if you don't have a background in accounting, you're going to start out with those and then add on electives. Um, if you do have a background in accounting, we're going to be able to waive some of those core courses and open the opportunity for more of that elective coursework. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to our third panelist, Rob, to share his experience uh, and a bit about why he chose the IMSA program. Oh, Rob, you're, you're muted. Hi, everyone. My name is Rob. Um, I'm from the Netherlands originally, but I work out of Latin America. And um, it was sort of in my early to mid 40s that I was sort of at a, a standstill in my career. I had studied hotel management in the Netherlands. Uh, so talk about coming from an unconventional um, background into the program. But I had a lot of operational experience in accounting and I was reporting into uh, a board um, I would like to say a very intimidating board with some of the smartest people I've ever had the pleasure to work with and at some point I felt that um, knowledge was lacking um, but I also understood that to give my career another boost I needed to focus on accounting so I found out about the program uh, realized how good it was, but wasn't quite sure how difficult it would be for me. Um, I ended up, while working uh, full-time, doing the program in three years, which meant, which meant I also took the summer programs. Um, I found it difficult, but very, very rewarding. And if you put in the work, uh, it certainly can be done to combine work and, um, and study. And um, the journey has been amazing because I've got to know uh, a lot of interesting people who I'm still friends with today. But more importantly, I guess, is that, um, you know, to answer the question, what did the program do for my career? Um, I've now been formally invited to join the board of our company. Um, a few days ago, I put a call through to the chairman and I asked him off the record what what weight did my diploma finally uh, add to my appointment? And his answer was, he said, look, it would have been very difficult for us to appoint you if you hadn't had the, the formal education. So that is a good, uh, was a big, um, uh, was very rewarding to hear, obviously. And the other thing, the other thing that I did is, um, uh, so I used to be the CEO of one of the business units in our holding group of companies. Um, but I was always traveling and I was traveling across 30 countries where we had our operations. So at one, one day, my wife said, look, all this traveling is getting a bit too, uh, too crazy. You're not seeing your kids. So I wanted not only from, uh, a personal development, uh, perspective to, to, to move on up, but also I wanted to, uh, tone down and bring down a little bit of my executive role. So. I also started the restaurant two years ago, and I always said to myself, look, if I'm ever going to go look for investors, um, are they going to, are investors going to give money to somebody with or without an accounting degree? Um, I'm now happy to report that we've done our first funding round for, uh, for second and third locations. And um, 
that's gone very well. So hopefully, and I like the thing. So my um, my education has helped there uh, has helped there as well. Great, very cool. Thanks, thanks for sharing, Rob. And full circle with your hospitality, you know, still bringing in your background of your hospitality degree, um, but adding that additional skill set and and congratulations. It, it's always a good feeling to to sit at the table of those that you had previously admired. And it sounds like your degree certainly helped you get there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Mitzi, I want to go back to you. You shared a little bit about your your day to day, but can you tell me a little bit about how your coursework at Geese maybe helped prepare you for your role at Hyatt? Were there any courses in particular that stood out for you? Yeah, so uh, I think with my concentration in fraud, which is financial reporting and assurance, um, it does focus on auditing and like looking at the financial reporting aspect of accounting. Uh, for that, um, I have actually seen a lot <laughs> like terminology and, and what I've learned in, uh, in my courses. I've seen it in my day-to-day -day job. So, uh, for example, I think one of the, uh, oh, in addition to my data analytics concentration, uh, as data analytics is increasing and being used more in the company, I can see it uh, in my perspective, uh, our company is using it more and more every day. Um, we have actually, I myself uh, use data analytics tool uh, to do, uh, flows for random sampling for our uh, for our sample selections during testing or like to uh, make our testing more uh, efficient. Uh, for those, uh, I think one of the main courses that has helped me a lot was 570, which is the Data Analytics Foundation. Uh, that one, I remember it's about uh, using Python, uh, which it teaches you the coding aspect. Um, uh, for that one, I was able to use those skills and transfer them to what the tool I'm using currently in my job. So that's been very beneficial for me uh, in those terms. I have also seen a lot on uh, the 510 financial reporting standards. I think uh, having a background and knowledge of, around that and auditing uh, itself too helps you uh with your with your job as well yeah right. right great that data analytics concentration is available across our portfolio of offerings so um certainly something a lot of students are taking advantage of and and Aki 570 is a, a popular course across the board uh Sonali, how about you a little bit more about your day-to-day -day or any particular courses that stand out as, as being beneficial for you Sure. Uh, as to start with my day to day, uh, apart from the, it's just been like four months, it's, and I'm new to accounting, so I'm still learning a lot. Uh, so uh, I think federal taxation helped me a lot because uh, in the uh, tax boutique firm we have a lot of individual clients, so that really helped me. I could at least do a individual taxation a little bit more, uh, and. Plus uh, accounting class of Professor Rachel, I think that's like a star class and uh, it is really helping with all the basics. And I think federal taxation and accounting basics are very important, uh, even if you have to go ahead with your CPA and um, preparing for audit and FAR at the moment. And I, I think the accounting class really did help uh, uh, during that. And plus uh, to, to talk more about my day to day at work, uh, because you work in that and we're talking about like being in uh, looking for jobs in non-traditional way, right? And not big four. Uh, I have talked to a lot of people in big four. They're just doing one thing and that's all. But when you're working in other firms, they make you do like different work. It's not just related to that. You'll just be filing taxation and then that's it. Uh, even when my taxation season got over, I was I'm working on reconciliations. I'm literally I I learned how to do uh, you know how to cut a check for the company and all of the small small things which uh, which firm uh, does. So I think that's great exposure to have that interconnection of what the work you're doing. So uh, one will have great 
I think, clarity of how the books are done and how the taxation are done. And when you do the cost basis of, you know, while you're doing taxation, it just really helps. And I think uh, I've had a good time uh, working at Steven Spector LLC, wherein I got the exposure to have my own client by now. And I'm handling A to Z of everything. So I think uh, that's a great exposure. And I don't think I would have gotten that so fast in uh, such big company, if we call it big four, uh, but I did get it here and it's a big, big client. So I think that's a great responsibility to start with. And I'm, I'm really grateful and uh, that that was amazing. And I think courses and clarity really did help me to sit and get that client. And um, I'm, I'm glad that I attended uh, accounting and uh, federal taxation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I, agree with the sentiment of the benefits of working for a smaller organization right. and, and have a lot of more variance often um, right. in your day to day. Rob, how about you? Any particular courses that stood out for you while pursuing so, the MSA? So I think for me, all of them stood out. Um, because again, I came from a very uh, unconventional background for an accounting program. But um, we have operations in 32 countries. And at the time I was p &L responsible for about 24, 25 of them. So the auditing component became such a big deal for us. Um, at some point we got on two large institutional investors, the World Bank and Citibank. So you can, you can understand the formalities that came into the business. Um, and then understanding the auditing process, the ins and outs was, invaluable to me um of course i also did management accounting and since we were going into new markets at a fairly rapid rate uh the management accounting bit was also invaluable but lastly lastly i'll say that i think that um sort of putting it all together for me is that one of the biggest insecurities i always had to deal with is not knowing what I don't know in terms of accounting. And since we became such a large company in a very short space of time, and again, with institutional investors, um, not knowing what you don't know uh, can lead to an insecurity and can lead to in effect. So so I, um, I now feel that I'm a more well-rounded executive and uh, understanding both operations and accounting is uh, is a great asset, especially in our company. Good, good, excellent. Um, Rob, you touched on your switching gears a little bit for you. You touched on, uh, you know, your company being in thirty-two countries. Did our, our IMSA program in particular is very diverse in the student population, and you have the opportunity to work with learners often from our IMBA program. Did you have that ability to network and and yeah. this is a fully online program? But did you have an, a, any ability to take advantage of any of the in person? Yeah, so so absolutely. So before I joined the program, I had done a few other online uh, programs. Where one of the things that I didn't like so much about it is that it's almost like learning from a book, but over a computer with a very preset um, structure. And uh, in the IMSA program we were constantly put in groups with people to perform a task for the next week. So um, the, the, I know I'm stating the obvious, I know I'm stating the cliche, but really your fellow students, they become part of your success in the program because it's been many evenings where we sort of had our study group together on a collective Zoom where maybe I was reaching a dead end and somebody else could help out and, and, and vice versa. Um, this is a, more than just an online program. It's very interactive, also with the professors, um, some of whom I'm, I'm still in contact with today, uh, fantastic people, but but um, the social aspect, despite it being an online program, is very, very much there. And it's a contributing factor to the success. Yeah. Okay. Good. Rob, did you have a chance to come to campus at all during, did you come oh. to Eichberg? So what happened is I, my program uh, overlapped with COVID. Mm. So the two times that I wanted to come, it was impossible for me to, to come over. So yeah, regrettably, I didn't. Um, but here in Miami, we, we have uh, once in a while, we do a little reunion with the people from, uh, from Miami. And um, 
of course, one of the people from the, from the university also helps sometimes organize these things. But also, besides Jim's involvement, we have our own uh, uh, meetups. And maybe maybe this is interesting as well to mention, which is that um, you know one of the people from my program is a banker here in Miami, and he's help he's helping me with the funding for the development of my uh, of my little business here. Yeah, that's great. Great. Uh, Mitzi and Sonali, uh, I think this will be a popular question for a lot of our prospective students that are uh, joining us looking into on-campus programs. Can you tell us a little bit about the recruiting process, how, uh, what services you used at the, the, at Geese, um, but also, you know, did you know you were looking non-Big Four or is that kind of uh, what opportunities were available. Just tell us about that process of how, how you got to where you are now. Uh, Sonali, we'll go to you first. Uh, okay, so to start with, um, while I was, I think we, uh, we have this fall career fair and I did get some opportunities to interview a few of the companies, but I think it just did not work out because some people do look for some of accounting experience and, uh, which I did not have uh, and to have like a five years of work experience and to go with the starting position as an associate, people have their doubts like if I would be fine with that or not, though I was fine with it. And uh, to tell you the truth, I did not hear back from Big Four, uh, but I did hear from the Big Six, which are in Germany, like Rudel and Partner, which was also great. And uh, I had a great interview with them as well. So uh, apart from that, then I was like literally going back to the career services of Keys and, you know, trying to tell them uh, to look at my resume and uh, what can I amend it and what can I do different that I stand out uh, and I get an interview call so I think there were good reviews done uh, twice or thrice I went on with uh, changing whatever they'd asked me to do and then uh, they'd have feedback each time so I think uh, they were really helpful I think I've bugged them a lot <laughs> and uh, but it did kind of help me because I kept on trying different uh, ways to get an interview so my whole point was to give a lot of interviews to understand what how it looks like and then one of it will click so uh, in the process I did give like almost uh, by the year ended in May I did give almost 20 interviews and I had three offers uh, so I had offers from one of the very big companies as well uh, that is a tech-based company called Wayfair it's uh, so I did not join Wayfair because it was just accounting and uh, I wanted to have experience in tax as well. So Wayfair was located in Boston. I got uh, an offer in the headquarters and it was great one. And I'm still in touch with the HR and she still tells me that if I ever change my mind, they'd love to have me. So I think uh, during those interviews, you make connections, you get to know who's hiring. And I think Gies does that to you that they are they feel the students are so reliable that they want to stay connected and I think I've never heard anyone say when I'm rejecting a company and they say let's stay in touch and if you ever change your mind the next year we'll we'll be open to hiring you and I I think it's just because I graduated from Gies and so uh, that's a very good thing apart from that Wayfair I got other two offers uh, so one of them were not sponsoring as a, as an international student we need sponsorship so it was not sponsoring so it was a clear choice that I'm not going to go ahead with it despite of being a small firm we always have that thing in our mind that uh, uh, they might not sponsor I think you should just go ahead and give your best at the interview if they think that you can bring something to the table they will take a step ahead and sponsor you so you can break the barrier of getting sponsored even if it's a small firm uh, I'm just talking in aspect of uh, being an international student at the moment so that helped apart from that a uh, great thing which Geese does uh, be being uh, in MSA they'd got uh, Dawn Kink uh, on board for us and she did really help us 
because she had worked in PwC for like almost 30 years, she, ha she had an experience how people are looking at resume, what do they want in someone uh, who's joining new and all of that. So I think that fresh perspective of someone who's worked in accounting for like 30 years uh, and she's telling us what can we change and how we can give interviews. I think each of, I think before every interview, I met her like almost for like seven to eight times. And I'm grateful that she always tried to find time for me. And then even on a Sunday, she had connected with me once um, to, you know, because I had a had an interview on Monday and she she's like, it's fine. Let's connect on Sunday. I'll give you the overview. And I think I'm just so thankful the how Giz helped me till the end. I did get a job right after graduation and I had one offer before graduation, but I could not join it. But uh, they were just there. Each time I reached out, the only thing we need to do is reach out to them and they're there to help you even on a Sunday. And I know that it's very difficult some for someone on a weekend to, you know, give time. And they did. And I think that's exceptional. I've not seen that anywhere. So I'm just so thankful. Yeah, that, that's great, Sonali. A lot of good feedback there. 20 interviews makes me feel a little anxious, but uh, it's really great experience, not just for your interviews, but determining what organization is the best fit for you. Right. Right. Um, and then Don is a, a tremendous asset for our MSA students. Uh, as Sonali mentioned, she has great professional industry experience. She's sharing that with students, but also coaching them and prepping them for their own uh, search and experience. All right. I'm curious, yeah. how, did, how did you learn about Steven Spector? It's, you know, as you've mentioned, it's a niche. Yeah. Uh, so that is so funny. I think I'm that one person who will just like talk to a lot of classmates and stay in touch and have, I think if I've come here all the way to it's just to make good connections as well while we're studying and uh, so one of the person got a job in Steven Spector LLC and that person got another job in some other firm so his name is Van Sok he's my, he was my classmate and he just went ahead and back referred me he was like rejecting the company by saying I have someone in my mind who has the who has this kind of you know experience and all of that and I think it was great it kind of helped me I directly went on a went on an interview with the CEO so I think it's just great to talk to everybody who's around you with your classmates and you never know what will like you know who will help you and I never had it I never did with the purpose of someone helping me it was just that I'm the kind of person who want to uh, know their classmates and be friends with them so it just kind of helped me at the end and he the guy just back referred me well he rejected the company and said you know Sonali is a great candidate and if you could interview it and I, because I got some other offer and that's how I got the interview and I got the job <laughs> good good I hear a common thread with with Rob and the the value of the network and those connections yes. and again mm, a, a so benefit true. of maybe not a big four uh, firm of, of having those close ties, meeting directly with the CEO. Right, right. So, Fitzy, I think your journey looked a little bit different. I think you had some internship experience with Hyatt prior to your full time yes. role, but but tell me a bit uh, about a bit about your experience and and the recruiting process. Yeah, so before joining U of I uh, and starting my master's degree, like you mentioned, I had well, I had the opportunity to intern with Hyatt uh, in 2021 first for internal audit and then 2022 again for um, uh, corporate accounting. Uh, in between that, I had an internship with EY uh, during busy season. Uh, I think that internship uh, really... I got to learn what I really wanted uh, in my career. Uh, I got to learn myself and what I want, um, what I, uh, helped me understand what I wanted to work on uh, and what values in workplace like matter to me. Um, I found out that Big Four is not for me. I did not enjoy my experience there. Um, a lot of people do, uh, others don't. For me, I personally found myself more comfortable in internal audit and enjoying it more. Um, then eventually, 
uh, after, during my time at U of I, I did use some resources like Handshake. Uh, that's one important tool within uh, U of I. Uh, I was able to look at the companies and like reviews of like students who had like interned there or worked there and like look at their experience with the company. Uh, similarly, I uh, like uh, Sonali said, uh, career fairs. Uh, I did attend one career fair during the fall. Uh, I, I believe it was during the fall. I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, and then, but I do remember always getting uh, emails about events of like uh, resume and like um, cover letter uh, workshops uh, to help you improve on your resume uh, or like review it or like interview, uh, like mock interviews, uh, stuff like that. Um, but uh, for me, uh, eventually, and uh, it's also about the networking. So I would think networking is a very big uh, thing also when it comes to like job searching and connecting with others, not being afraid to ask uh, questions to recruiters and, and learning more about like the company itself. Uh, for me, I was gratefully enough to get contacted by Hyatt, by the internal audit team, and ask me uh, that a position was opening uh, for an internal audit position, and they suggested me to apply, and I applied, and I was able to get the, and I got the job for, with them. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, Thanks Mitzi. Mm -hmm. Um. I know Kate's asking for any questions for our panelists while it, it, from our from our attendees. Uh, I do want to hear any advice that you have for our attendees uh, if they're considering a graduate degree in accounting or considering going a route. Maybe they've decided on uh, um, accounting, but you know considering whether they should go big four, big six, or go a, a different route, what type of advice do you have for them? Um, Sonali, do you mind if we start with you on this one? Uh, sure. So I think um, as I, I'll talk with the perspective of an international student or anyone who has done uh, a degree from MSA. So I think uh, just start early is my tip. Like, don't think let's wait till fall or let's wait for summer, uh, sorry, spring uh, career fair or anything which happens uh, all around the campus. I think the best thing being in accounting is it's going to be in each company. I did not uh, think that I just want to go ahead with big fours or accounting firms. I went ahead and applied to tech firms as well. That's why that's how I landed Wayfair. And uh one who wants to just work, one can become a controller in Wayfair. So I think do not bound yourself thinking a uh, big four or big six is it. Being in accounting, you have that upper hand that you're going to be in each form, be it tech or medical or accounting, right? So I think I did not, I think the best thing I had in my mind that I did not tell myself that this is it. I, I have like 10 to 12 companies to apply for. I, I kept my portfolio very open to each company and I did change my resumes for applying to like, you know, uh, you just need to see what you want. Like, like if I have to apply in accounting and tax, that were my like choices. So you work on your resume and you go ahead and apply for jobs accordingly. So I think uh, being in accounting, uh, we always have an upper, upper hand to apply anywhere and everywhere. And uh, starting early will really help you land a job before you graduate because at graduation um, it's just easier to you know do everything if you have a job in hand and you can just prep for your CPA and uh, I think just apply early is my main tip and keep your options open to each company and not just big four and big six. Okay. Very good I think you gave an even more beneficial tip in there too which was really customizing uh, or equally beneficial customizing your resume for each job sure. you're applying for uh, we see that even applying to graduate programs we want you to answer the questions that we're asking and making sure uh, that you're really highlighting you know if you're applying for a tax position highlighting coursework you've taken in tax um, I think that certainly goes a long way yeah. in the initial step right definitely yeah 
Mitzi, how about you, uh, advice that you have for prospective students, either in pursuing graduate education or uh, pursuing their career options? I think it's been, uh, like Sonali said, uh, kind of uh, uh, piggybacking on what she said, uh, I think it's important to be open to opportunities uh, and learning about yourself too and what you want. Uh, I think uh, being able to uh, to to uh, take uh, different opportunities and learning what you uh, are seeking and your values are important too. And being open to communication, I think it's a it's a, a contributing factor of what. Uh, of what you can find uh, outside in the career uh, perspective. As for like uh, degree-wise uh, in, uh, in accounting and your MAS or MSA, uh, I think, like she said, uh, applying early, being able to understand what your concentration, what you want as a concentration, whether it's fraud or like, um, or text, uh, and then what you want to get out of the course and whether your goal is to get a CPA and or not yeah okay good rob before your advice we've got a specific question here for you um uh let's see having extensive experience with investors and shareholders can you touch on the relevancy of being able to communicate financial statements having a formal education in accounting has this helped with this aspect yeah look that's a great question um uh, absolutely, the answer is yes. And it was also one of the reasons why I very much wanted to pursue the program. Um, for all intents and purposes, when I started with my company in 2002, I had previously worked in hotels. Um, but since we were a fairly, uh, it was a fairly new, new business unit for us that I was then running, I was sort of thrown in the deep end of the pool and became p &L or financial res responsible for financial results of the company. And I always like to say jokingly, you know, for many years, I had only an experience with one PL and one balance sheet. And it's very limited, it's very limited, right? So the first few years when everything was so operationally heavy dependent, I could sort of get away with not having sufficient accounting knowledge. But then as the company grew, and as investors came on, it became apparent that I needed to, I needed to do better. So uh, coming back to the confidence thing, uh, having now completed the degree and feeling that I have a true understanding of accounting, I can talk to people with confidence and I won't have the wool pulled over my eyes and and I can you, you can tell you can tell that when you meet with people who have to write you a check that uh there's an appreciation for having somebody on the other side of the table who understands finance and accounting um I wouldn't say that I'm the biggest expert in the world but but um the program has given me the vocabulary that I need the knowledge that I need and the cliche is so true that accounting is the language of, of business. And that's what I realize every day in my board meetings and in investor meetings. Um, it's invaluable, invaluable. Yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, great, great. Rob, how about any advice that you may have for our prospective learners? Oh, so so um, tailoring it a little bit to my own experience and again, coming from a non-traditional background but having some operational accounting experience but more in the sort of bookkeeping side of things um i realized very early on that uh and i'm talking now once was already in the program that um starting a week ahead with the coursework has pulled me through the program so it's um it, it's um it's intense but if the if your time management during the program is good, is solid. If you have the amount of hours set away, away from your professional life or personal life, it's absolutely something that, uh, that that can be done. But time management, time management during the study while you're combining it with work is uh, a big success contributing factor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a different perspective of advice, which is equally as important for those that are considering working and doing school um, and, and considering whether 
you know, this is feasible to do. And, and again, the, our online programs are designed for that working professional, but it does take that commitment. Uh, the flexibility is there, however, to work ahead. Uh, so, so you are able to balance and still do your travels and study and, and spend your time with your family as well. Um, we do have some additional uh, questions in the chat. Um, so I'm just going to throw these out here if anyone feels uh, that that it's applicable to them. We've got a couple of minutes left. Our first question is about accounting uh, data analytics courses, um, specifically involving Python and R. Um, I think Mitzi mentioned uh, Acu 570. Anyone else take any of the data analytics courses or concentrations? I did not know. I did it. I took the concept and it's amazing. Uh, so I think I also wanted a perspective of uh, how Python works uh, at the end of the day, because everyone's just moving to, you know, having that kind of a hold to the software. So I, I think it was a great class to take. And you realize that at, at, if you take 570, if you want to take the, you know, advanced class of that or not, so until you take it and you do it, you will never know. I think it's a great class. Go ahead, take it, experiment it. It's always great to have that knowledge. Mitzi, anything to add from your side? Yeah, uh, I would say 570 is like, uh, it requires no coding experience uh, for that course. Uh, so it was like easy to understand uh the coding perspective um of, of that and i have actually like i mentioned i have actually used my skills that i learned in in that course and implement them in my day uh in my daily routine as i work with flows or i create flows with the analytics tool to help me select uh samples or or like make my my job a little bit more easier uh, through the day as um, we test a lot of controls with it uh, uh, for, for our testings. So I would say I have learned and used the skills that I learned at 570 or other uh, data analytics courses uh, within uh, the Geese's, uh College of Business. And they have been very effective in my career. Uh, this is the last question. If if anyone feels we have one candidate that knows they want to go into accounting, but not necessarily what to specialize in, any advice for exploring the different routes that you can go, either in your academia or in your professional um, pursuits? Any last advice there? I I took. The, the most general courses because I thought it would give me the most sort of global perspective on on accounting. I didn't take any of the highly specialized courses because I thought that if I feel I need to do those, I can still do those later on. And I I was going for the general knowledge, so I took um, I didn't took take any highly specialized um, courses. Yeah. I think for me, um, I was very adamant to get into auditing uh, by by the year was ending in December. And I was like, uh, I was still deciding if I have to go in tax or not. So I think one, if someone get clarity and if someone needs clarity, geese do offer, uh, what do we call it? There's, uh, it's not an internship. I forgot the name. I think uh, wherein you work in the tax and then you help for the, people to you know uh file their taxes and uh, i think it's a great start to get clarity so i think when you're in college or even if it's online try and experiment with the program uh, from for, uh, from the courses which you take and by the course ends you'll have more clarity for uh entering the workforce so i think it's great to experiment do not stick to something one and uh that is that that is just my tip for the people. I kind of understood that I wanna just stick to federal taxation, and uh, I did not want to go ahead with state uh taxation uh and all of that. So I did not go ahead and take that. But someone, if someone's so clear that they wanna 
go ahead with that please do offer it so i think just uh, see what works out for you and uh, the best thing is you can take the course and drop it within like 15 to 20 days of span if you think it's not working out for you so do not hesitate and do not think that you're bounded to something these give you an give you a platform where you can try and you can go ahead and talk to professors and uh, someone who's you know taking care of the your program uh, design and everything uh, they'll help you at the end of the day if something is not working out for you so do not hesitate to um, experiment something while you're studying yeah great advice plenty of resources available through faculty and staff to have conversations with you about your interests, opportunities to try things, special guest speakers. Um, if you have the opportunity to do internships, of course, that's a great chance to really get your feet wet as well. With our online programs, you can take non-credit courses in advance and really explore your, your uh, options there as well without this, the full commitment. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. It's been a great hour together, uh, really unique and diverse perspectives across our panelists, uh, where they work, the different stages of their career that they were in, um, and a great highlight for each of our programs. So thanks again for sharing, a, uh, sharing with us, panelists. I'm going to pop up my screen one last time. Again, if you would like to connect with our team, uh, please do so. You can scan the code there to get in contact with our recruiting team uh, or also explore our programs and connect uh, with our student ambassadors as well. So thank you once again. I hope everyone has a terrific day ahead, evening for some joining us, and we hope to see you soon at Geese.